I think that the greatest boundaries are the same in the developing world as in the developed world. We should leave no one behind. And of course, if you're in a developing world, the risk of leaving people behind is bigger than in the developed world. But at the end of the day, it's always about redistribution in any economy. So we have to make sure we leave no one behind. And that's going to be our biggest, biggest challenge. Well, frankly, I have to say one of the best pieces of good news we got uh, in the recent months was President Xi Jinping announcing that China would no longer subsidize. And Indonesia is a very important country um, for COP26, um, incoming president of the G20, but also a country that has made huge strides in terms of uh, the climate issue. Uh, it's now a country that wants to lead in this issue, wants to show that uh, they can also transform their economy into a sustainable economy. And I'm really excited about that. That's why I want to be here. How do you see these new technologies being applicable to Indonesia? Well, I think there is a, a huge responsibility of the developed world to share technologies with the developing world, um, not just out of altruism, also because it's, it's good business opportunity. Just imagine what happens if the temperature goes beyond two degrees increase. So what I want out of Glasgow is us to be able to say afterwards, you need all that technology. That needs to be shared. But why would uh, a business share that? Because it's in their interest. And what do you need to do? You need to create a stable investment environment. You need to fight corruption. You need to make sure that it's interesting for foreign investors to come and share technology. You've previously said that we will ensure the transition will be in coal-producing regions will be fair way. What does fair look like for these countries? Well, 30 coal mining regions in the EU still need to wean themselves a call. Uh, that's a huge, huge operation. We will um, make sure this is done in a just way so that they have an economic future in that region, so that we skill and reskill the workforce uh, for them to take uh, new jobs, that we bring new economic activities to, th to those regions. And I would love to share that experience uh, with Indonesia. Um, but we now need to see what China is going to do domestically. They've announced that it would peak out, that is, they would reach their maximum emissions before 2030. Well, the sooner the better, and I hope they will make an announcement that is ambitious. Um, so we're waiting for that to happen. Uh, China was always part of the success. Without China, Paris would have never happened. So China has a strong legacy in terms of being part of a successful conclusion. So I hope we can repeat that experience at Glasgow. Of having a lot of sun, a lot of wind, a lot of geothermal. We need to reduce our emissions substantially between now and uh, 2030. We have committed to at least 55% reduction as compared to 1990. Others will have to follow suit. And to do that, you need to make this energy transition happen almost at lightning speed. And that is our real difficulty. I think I've given you quite some time. Thank you so much. Pleasure.